Hey friends, John Pavlovitz here. Well, it's getting close to midnight here in North Carolina and right next to me, our new rescue puppy, Charlie, is sound asleep. And I was getting ready to think about sleep myself uh, and didn't plan on recording anything tonight. But then I realized today feels very similar to so many days that have come before it. It's a day maybe like one you've had recently where you wake up in the morning and you have a sense of optimism for a little bit, but then you check the news or you get on social media or you step out into your community and you realize what's happening, what we're up against, the cruelty and the malevolence and the violence and the division. It's all right there. And you go through eight or 10 or 12 or 14 hours of that. And then you get ready to go to bed and you think to yourself, Wow, today was really horrible, but you know what? Tomorrow is bound to be better. And you go to sleep, and the problem is you wake up and you have that optimism, and then you check the news or you go on social media or you step out into your community and you see that it's happening again. And that there are people in this world who seem to wake up trying to find new and innovative ways to be cruel. And then you grow weary. And this happens over and over and over again. And you string together enough of these days and they can easily overwhelm you. And I imagine if you're like me, if you have a working heart, if you have, um, you know, empathy that is functioning, you feel that way right now. You probably are receiving this and you're in a place where you're exhausted and you're frustrated and you're in despair. Well, you're not alone and you're not crazy because the fact that you are so burdened by these days means your faculties are intact. It means your mind is fully right. It means your heart is still working properly. It means you still have a soul doing what a soul is supposed to do, keep you deeply human and profoundly inhumane times because there is a natural response to days like this and it's to grieve. You may not realize that that's what you've been doing. You, you may think you're just angry. You may think you're perpetually pissed off. You may think you're irritable and impatient, and you are, but those are just symptoms of another problem. That is just a sign that you are mourning the loss of something. And that's what I've been thinking about tonight. How much grief has been associated with the past couple of years here in America? And I can remember waking up the day after the election and there was a profound sense of grieving. Not figurative grief, not um, sort of symbolic grief, but genuine loss at what felt like a death. On that morning, many of us were grieving the big and distant things, right? Big ideas like our idea of America or our image of the church or our image of our families, right? Those big, those big picture things were suffering losses. They weren't the same anymore. But that wasn't the only grief we were doing. We were grieving we were doing. We were grieving the small and the close things too, right? We were grieving the comments from our neighbors and the social media posts from family members and sermons from pastors and comments from church people. So we were grieving those big and distant things and the small and close things. And there was nothing that wasn't touched by this sense of loss. And the thing about it is the way grief normally works is that you lose someone you love. They die one time and you spend your entire life processing that one event. But this is different. This is her perpetual grieving, right? It's a relentless sense of loss. So one day we're looking at walls being built and families being separated and we grieve that. But we can't grieve that for very long because the next day we're being reminded of the racial inequalities and the violence around race. And so we're grieving that. And then we can't sit with that either because the next day we're grieving some corruption in the government. And then we move on and we try to grieve that. But then we're 
we have to move on to a virus that's killing so many people and the disregard of of people in power, right? And so all these these grief moments keep piling up over and over again. They begin to accumulate and we can't really process any of them. And that's why you're so tired because we're not supposed to be have to deal with grief like this. We're not supposed to have to hold everything all the time. And so what do we do? What do we do right now? If you're there or I'm here and we're just worn out by another day that we've seen the inhumanity of people. Well, as it, within all grief, you have to transfer that mourning, that sense of loss into something productive, into something redemptive, something positive. And that's what we need to do now. And that could look a million different ways for you, how to transfer that mourning and that loss into something else. It may mean doing work in your community that's meaningful to you, getting involved with a nonprofit or getting involved with a, a ministry of some sort, getting involved in a community group. It may be that you get on social media and you begin to leverage that platform that you have. You become maybe more outspoken. Maybe you become more explicit about the things that matter to you. It might mean for you that you get involved in political races or you, you campaign for candidates or you give financially or you give of your time. Now, I hope it's going to mean for you that you're going to get to the polls in November and you're going to get other people to the polls and you're going to vote your convictions. You're going to vote um, that grief is going to propel you into the polls. And I'm hoping that in November there's going to be a change. There's going to be a, a measurable change in the leadership of this country. And But yet, if that happens, and whether or not it happens, all the things that we're grieving are still going to be present. Right, Because this has never been about a single person. It's never been about a politician or a party. This is about something much bigger. Because this that person and this politician and this party haven't, hasn't created, they haven't created this enmity. They haven't created this violence. They haven't created this malevolence. They've only revealed it. They've shown us what we're dealing with. They've emboldened people to be less apologetic about their prejudice and their hatred. And so regardless of what happens in November, those things, those realities are still going to be present. And we're going to have to do on that day the same thing we're going to do tomorrow morning. We're going to get up and we're going to prepare ourselves to be Givers of compassion, providers of kindness, instruments of benevolence, and people who traffic in love. That's not going to change no matter what happens, and that's why you're grieving. But you're going to get up tomorrow morning and you're going to do it all over again. You're going to keep loving and giving and caring and being a helper and a healer. Because the world needs that and you know that. See, that's the amazing thing. You probably ask yourself a question many times during the course of a given day. Is it me or has a huge portion of this country lost its mind? Well, I have some good and some bad news for you, friend. It isn't you. Now, that's good news because of what it says about you, but it's bad news because of what it says about the place and time in which you find yourself. All that to say, if you're grieving right now, you may want to celebrate that because it means that your humanity is still working. So to all of you out there who are tired and frustrated and grieving. Keep going. The world needs people like you more than ever. It's going to need them in November. It's going to need them when you wake up tomorrow morning. So be greatly encouraged today. Peace.